Good morning, everyone. My name is Wanapong Durung Kaweirot. I'm from Ramkhamhaeng University, Bangkok, Thailand. Today, I would like to talk about openness and gross poverty nexus reappraisal with a new openness indicator. So here is my research question. How does trade openness affect poverty and the relationship between economic growth and poverty reduction? So how does trade openness reduce poverty? There are two channels. The first one, trade can reduce poverty directly by changing factor proportion of production. This is the so-called the factor proportion effect. Another channel is trade can reduce poverty through uh, indirectly through economic growth or uh, which we call the Puel effect. Let's look at the first one as postulated by Stoker and Samuelson the model, the factor proportion of test that trade liberalization in the poor economies or in developing country uh, will increase a specialization in labor intensive production and also uh, raise the demand for unskilled labor. This will uh, result in the higher unskilled wages uh, after uh, the pool of labor supplies are depleted. However, the most relevant factor here is an ability to generate employment. So trade creates employment that injects an income to the poor even if wages do not increase. The second channel is the pull up effect. The basic notion is that trade openness can uh, induce economic growth and that economic growth will reduce poverty. So export earning uh, can relax the balance of payment constraint, allow the economy to access foreign net capital goods, machinery, and other essential intermediate inputs that enable an expansion of the manufacturing uh, sector. Also, export indirectly can uh, uh, result in a high productivity at firm level, in the three level, and uh, this thing will diffuse international knowledge and foreign technology. All these factors will promote growth, and that growth pull up everyone who are people from poverty. So let's look at the, lit the literature. The findings of a series of detailed country studies are consistent with this both portulates. I uh, think about the study by Little, uh, Ian Little, and Kruger, Texas Begwati, Balasa, Kruger, uh, and so on. However, recent multi-country economic studies uh, have found evidence in support only the growth effect on poverty. So what does it mean? It means that there, there is no, no evidence of the direct poverty reduction effect of trade openness as postulated by standard trade theory and supported by the findings of the early uh, country cases. The research question here is, do the findings of multi-country studies reflect the well known limitations of the common use openness indicator, which is the trade to GDP ratio. So now let's talk about the limitation of the trade to GDP ratio. So trade to GDP ratio may capture uh, some things that have little to do with uh, liberal trade policy. For example, the country size, geography, population, capital uh, accumulation, and so on. And recent paper by E.T. Fuji in 2019 said that uh, for the case of Japan, uh, trade to GDP ratio is found to be driven by GDP, by the denominator instead of the trade volume. So what, uh, what I have done is I construct uh, a new index of trade openness drawing on the work of Jeffrey Williamson and his research associates. So the basic idea is that the rate of change in process of traded goods at home and abroad should converge. So at a given point of time, of course, the level of price of a given product, especially the manufacturing product, can be different across countries uh, due to uh, so many reasons, for example, uh, uh, transportation costs and other fixed costs. But over time, trade opening should manifest in the convergence of the changes in the relative prices of trade goods. So uh, note that we are comparing changes in tradable prices among countries. We are not comparing the level of uh, the prices across country. Okay, and we use uh, the US price as a bet because 
uh, U.S. is the largest trading uh, nation, and uh, uh, so, so, so this is quite appropriate uh, to use the U.S. Uh, as the uh, uh, as the reference price. So the price conversion is they have to do that first one. Uh, we collect the data on manufacturing price index for individual country uh, measured by the implicit manufacturing price to flatter derived from the national account. So uh, unit here is uh, in the local currency unit. The best year is the 1970. So I adjust price index uh, for other countries for changes in domestic currency to US dollar exchange rate. And then we divide the country exchange rate uh, adjusted price index by the US price index uh, with the reason that the US is the largest trading nation during the period uh, of the study and uh, it is quite relatively open to the team. And then we calculate the absolute deviation of the adjusted price ratio from one. Uh, and then make, make an inverse to make it consistent with, with the standard trade uh, uh, measure. But that's what mean, mean that the higher the index, uh, uh, the higher the degree of the trade openness. So here is my model specification. It looks like uh, the standard, uh, 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 poverty equation, uh, 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 we run the, uh, the poverty on several things, for example, GDP uh, per capita trade openness. So we have two measures here. The first one is trade to GDP ratio, and the second one is the price conversion index. And then we also add uh, the inflation uh, in order to capture uh, the, the effect from the macroeconomic, uh, uh, macroeconomic uh, uh, factor and also include the um, uh, gov uh, government expenditure as share of GDP, and also the degree of the regime repressiveness. The higher the index, the higher the repressiveness of the society. So we also introduce an interaction term between GDP and openness in order to check with the uh, 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 for a, for a given uh, amount of economic growth whether or not that impact. Uh, or poverty is bigger uh, 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 for a country with a larger trade regime. So data organization is, uh, I follow the traditional way of managing the data. So uh, because the data on, on poverty is quite uh, sparse and it, it results in a highly un un unbalanced data set. And so we make it into spell. So uh, basically it's kind of like I take the difference between year, so it's look like a gross regression uh, with the FD or or uh, figure estimated. So here is the regression result. Uh, let's uh, look at first uh, when the trade openness is measured by the trade to GDP ratio. Uh, you can see here that uh, uh, when trade openness is uh, measured by the trade to GDP ratio, uh, the coefficient on this. Uh, variable is not significant, even though uh, the uh, size of the coefficient is negative. However, when a trade openness is measured by the price conversion index, you can see that uh, it is as expected. Uh, it means that uh, uh, the uh, trade openness reduced poverty. Okay, and uh, uh, look at this interaction term is negative and it's significant at uh, the, the one percent level. What does it mean? It means that uh, economic growth can reduce poverty, and its impact is larger for the more open economy. So here is uh, in urban exchange, so I change several things, and the results are uh, consistent. For example, small, smallest that set, and using a different estimation. So in conclusion. Uh, using the traditional measure of openness consistent with the previous study, we found no direct, no direct relationship between openness and poverty reduction. However, when we use the price conversion index, there is a strong evidence that there is a systematic relationship between trade openness and poverty reduction. So uh, this result uh, call for a further attempt, more attempt to develop a better indicator of trade openness. Uh, in order to broaden our understanding about poverty outcome of trade openness in this era of economic globalization. Thank you very much.